Hey everybody, it's Dora Coach with Tactical Hive. Today's video, we're gonna be going over battle belts, where I started with them in my career and how it all kind of evolved and changed throughout the years. So stay tuned. Alright guys, we're back and today it's all about battle belts, alright? Not pistol belts, not service belts, the really serious kind. The kind for battle. And um, speaking of which, if you ever find yourself in a gun battle of your very own, you know, probably one of the uh, spontaneous um, unscripted ones that are becoming more and more common in our great yeah. society, you might want to think about um, having some coverage for that secondary fight that's definitely going to follow. It's gonna happen, that perp's gonna sue you or his family, they're gonna come after your money. Now, here on the channel, we like to use CCW Safe because they actually have an experienced team that they will send to you and they're gonna walk you through this so you're not out there by yourself. Other companies might just write you a check and wish you, you know, good luck, right? So, check them out in the link below. Might be the best thing you did today. Without further ado, Battle belts. Yeah. Okay, yeah. guys. And so back into battle belts. Yeah. Okay, so we put out a battle belt video um, before with Coach's ago. Korea yeah. a while ago. We're going to go ahead and pick things back up with how I started. Now, this one here, this is one of mine, actually, but yeah. this is the overlap. This is where, oh, somewhere in, my, in the middle of my uh, career, but um, it was kind of what uh, they gave you when you got to Buds, right? So, yeah. So starting out in Buds, um, we actually used our dive belts which is just a, kind of a stand, which is what your, uh, your dive pearls, your weight went on. So we went and stripped all the weight off okay. and they just gave us this holster. It's like the most basic, plain Jane, uh, Safari Land holster, no paddle, no none of that. It has, actually has a snap right here instead of a button, but, but it, they worked. It was a leap ahead in, yeah. in holster technology because this Kydex, this was like the first Kydex uh, that you know, we got mm -hmm. issued. And, uh, and it became uh, you know, model specific at that point. So that was your 226, no light yeah. holster. And this, this right here, this bungee cord, this is actually added retention that would flip up and over the uh, pistol grip. Um, just in case you were diving, jumping, climbing, you know, things like that. You don't want to lose your don't gun. Don't lose that bad boy. Landers are also a good idea. <laughs> but uh, so also on this belt is the Black Hawk Law Enforcement Duty Belt with this big fast tech. It's also Velcro, Velcroed on. I had a couple of these after I got through uh, initial training. They did actually give us nice things. And um, these belts were kind of the industry standard for everybody. Yeah, and, and, and it's a lot like a dive belt, you know? Mm -hmm. It's just, it's, it's got, you have that, that stiffness to it, right? And initially we didn't have any kind of padding underneath it. Right. So yeah, it would kind of, yeah, chafing's a real thing. Man. Yeah, so this is a uh, add-on, I think also made by Blackhawk. These are known as pussy pads. I never used them. <laughs> um, that's not true. I, I, that's not, I use them quite a bit, actually. And then um, also of note, uh, is these Blackhawk mag pouches. These things are unfortunately discontinued, but my favorite pistol mag pouches of all time. I mean, these things have got to be at least 25 years old. Oh, yeah. I mean, mine are 20 years old, and they, they still, still work, work great. They've got uh, plastic inserts in them, and uh, they also have these nice tabs. You can go up, uh, up and over the magazine for, again, added retention. A big part of our job is getting to the, the place where we get to do our job. So you're roping, jumping out of aircraft, you're coming in and out of the water, you're climbing on stuff, you're falling off of stuff, you're slipping, you're falling, you're swearing, you're cursing, you're spitting. You gotta be able and you don't to secure that mags. gear, man. You don't want to lose your mags. And these yeah. mag pouches did it all for a very long time. Uh, they're not molly, actually they are molly compatible. Yeah. They are molly compatible, but by accident. So yeah, I used um, these very same pistol mag pouches and then back in the day, Drop on the leg was a viable option. I know you used it quite a bit throughout your career. That was the, uh, yeah, the, the go-to. It was like, oh, you got all this gear up here. You, you start pushing it down your legs. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this didn't get a whole lot of use, uh, but 
Yeah, it starts weighing on you. This one doesn't have, this was about as heavy as you want to go. In mm -hmm. fact, a little heavier before you start throwing suspenders on there because that weight on your hips, especially when you're running up and down stairs mm -hmm. or hiking up and down hills. Yeah, you're running around on you terrain, out. climbing on stuff. Having stuff on your legs drove me crazy. Having even too much stuff on my waist drove me crazy. But Charlie Sheen did it in Navy SEALs, so yeah, which you know, is, it looked cool. So yeah, Enough said. <laughs> you know, enough said. <laughs> Take it from me, take it from Tactical Hive, from both of us, anything in that movie, just just go ahead and believe it. Rock solid, man. Yeah, not really. Don't, <laughs> not really. But still a great movie. Anyway, um, I did use this uh, particular mag pouch on the leg in this exact configuration very early on in my career. Um, it was also, they had the triple crash pouch as well yeah. that I used longer Probably, maybe, definitely my first deployment, maybe in my second deployment, I did pull that out and use it from time to time. That triple MP5 pouch was... Uh, yeah, was there's another. that one. And those were great for diving. This was also, mm. you could you know, go ahead, I don't recommend your dry land primary use be the same equipment that you're doing your maritime, especially diving yeah. and stuff like that. It um, wears out quicker. It wears out very quickly. All that salt water and you know, but we, but we both did have dive belts that were set up very much like this. Mm -hmm. um, that you could go back and forth different platforms. Obviously, one of the MP5 and M4 variants were the primaries, but it worked very well because with all that dive gear on, you would um, you need somewhere to put your stuff, and uh, it was pretty much all on the belt for maritime or for actual diving operations. Yeah. Um, so I used this setup um, definitely through my first. A cycle and then maybe even into my second cycle though not not as much on my second deployment I um, was a big fan of just putting stuff right on my belt it was a different kind of mission it was much mm -hmm. more vehicle oriented and just having as little stuff on the waist when you're getting in and out of uh, trucks different um, platforms it just kind of made sense from a comfort level mm -hmm. and then this comfort is, is important guys yeah it really okay. is Combat's great, but man, you gotta, you're gotta you not always in it, right? You've gotta be able to get there mm -hmm. and be fresh when you get there. So comfort is, is, is key. And then this belt, I actually pulled the stuff off of the Blackhawk one piece um, belt and started using this purpose built with cushion Molly mm -hmm. belt, cause more Molly, 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 Molly. More Molly, more better. More Molly, more better <laughs> stuff was coming out. Um, I have the exact same triple mag pouch for the pistol. I generally only ran a double mag pouch um, when I was doing operational stuff, but as an instructor, you're gonna need extra mag pouches. Mm -hmm. So that's what this was for. I actually had five on here at one point, because um, this was my Bud's belt. This is what I taught Bud's with. And then these pouches on the back, which was a pretty tried and true standard of the time, are, uh, this is a 200 saw rounder. 200 round, machine gun pouch and this is a 762 100 round machine gun pouch and they're just hooked on with the old alice clips and then reinforced with zip ties to make sure they don't come off but i had these two pouches on my original kit from my early days mm -hmm. then um, as you can see the holster is so we'll, uh, I, I, I had similar stuff like here mm -hmm. this would be like kind of like a crash pouch yeah or, uh, anything anything the mission needed I've spoken, we've, we have spoken uh, in length about lay out the equipment you're going to use and then create places to put them. Because if you just have a ton of this stuff all over your kit, you're just going to, the good idea fairy yeah. is going to decide that you need to fill this up with stuff that you, you might not need. But it did get used. I mean, as a machine gunner, if I was running a smaller, you know, more streamlined kit, I could throw extra ammo into these mm -hmm. if I needed to. I often use them for um, medical gear, um, tons of uh, the throw bangs, you know, crashes, frags, smokes, um, that kind of stuff would go in here. If I was a grenadier, I could put 40 mm -hmm. mic mic rounds in these. Yeah, and um, Put about a dozen in there. Yeah, you could put your nods and your, your um, attachment elbow in, mm -hmm. in uh, these as well. You just would want to protect them with something. You had other padded, um, little bags that you put them in because obviously you need to take care of that stuff. But yeah, having these on the butt, I pretty much, depending on the night, you know, who knows what I'd have in there. And it really did vary. Then um, the holster, 
you know, is definitely a far more modern version than that first one. You know, this is kind of that flagship Safari Land. This one still didn't have the light on it. Um, I had black ones as well like this, but things just started to become more purpose built. Yeah, tanning. you started getting this, this little uh, thigh pad here that actually held the gun where it was supposed to be. The last one didn't have it and the gun would flop mm -hmm. around a lot. So you know, this was a little more, uh, a little more stable. You could uh, do your transitions uh, to your secondary a little smoother because the gun was gonna be there. Yeah, and honestly nothing on this belt is purpose built for Molly. So as Molly and the old school kind of merged together, this is kind of a perfect period piece. Um, just with the, the way that we attach things, you know, slamming this through, just, just you know, with a pair of pliers, just yanking it through, mm -hmm. you know, probably messing the Molly up a little bit, doesn't matter. Um, you know, these Blackhawk pouches that I mentioned earlier, they just naturally fit through Molly because it's actually three separate Velcro straps that I was able to weave through the Molly no problem. This has been on here since around the time we met, and which was in 2008, nine mm -hmm. time frame, and they're, they're, they're perfect. Yep, still working. Yeah, and then this is just kind of a random pig sticker from SOG. I don't remember which this was called, doesn't matter. I do remember breaking the tip off though, <laughs> pissed off. <laughs> but I think it'll still shank, but it still shanks plenty well. Yeah, it'll work. Alrighty. Do the job. What's next? Uh, so yeah, so this kind of got us out of the 2000s into the 2010s. Um, kind of the next genesis, you know, or next um, offering in the uh, evolutionary line were these kind of more so what you see now. These are purpose built for the shooter. Mm -hmm. um, they, they, they have a lot in common with the actual competition shooters, you know, and the stuff that they run, you know, very rigid. Um, I think the coolest thing about them is they have these inner Velcro belts yeah. that you would actually wear on the pants, and then you'd be able to take this thing off, kind of like the bat belt that it is. So you, you pull this right off your pants, you'd still have this, you know, run through your, uh, in, on your pants to keep them, keep them up, and then these things, you know, you just you take them on, you take them off. They're very secure. They don't slosh around like the old ones used to. Yeah, you're not getting a friction fit. You're getting actually yeah. a Velcro attachment between your, your pants and your, and your belt. Now, on the older ones, um, that belt wasn't good enough to secure you to something like a helicopter. Um, so you, ha you would wear a rigger's belt underneath that, mm -hmm. that D-ring that you could run your, uh, your you know, connection to, right? Um, these bad boys, they, they yes. decided they put that uh, Cobra buckle together, put a little D-ring on there, so it just made it, you know, one less layer of crap that you need mm -hmm. to have on. Yeah, so these were rated, you know, with this buckle system to, you know, oh, be it an would anchor tear point. you in half, man. Yeah, I mean, to be an yeah, anchor yeah. point. You could land yourself onto an aircraft or whatever you needed to do, and that's very important. And that, yeah. You know, the belt Anytime is you get on a helicopter, uh, they don't have seat belts. It's not like you know your commercial airlines. You're sitting on the floor, and a bunch of little D rings, and you'd have a little connector. One would go on your belt. One went on the aircraft, and what 30 seconds out normally, we'd mm -hmm. unhook and be ready to go. Yeah. So this one um, is set up more as a teaching belt. It has the four mag pouches, um, and these will run 226 or 320 mags. Mm -hmm. I put a dump pouch on there. Sometimes I use it. Sometimes I don't. But there's really nothing else on this one. It's pretty uh, streamlined. And you also got the, uh, the lighted pistol holster there. Yeah, so. and then this one does have the, uh, the light for the X300. Fits right in there. No prop. Still has the old bail, but doesn't bother me at all. Yeah, I'm used yeah, to it. Well, yeah, once you know how to use them, it's pretty easy. And then this one I got a little bit later. This is my Glock belt. Like I said before in previous videos, we did end up switching from the 226 to the Glock, so we got a whole new belt. This one has the, so this one was actually worn on deployments. So it has the med uh, kit on it. One of my two that I would be carrying tourniquets. Uh, another dump pouch, a Leatherman on this one. And then I have the four mag pouches again, but I think that was just for training purposes. Mm -hmm. Overseas, I don't think I ran that many. And then this smaller uh, holster from Safari Land doesn't have the light on it, nor does it have the bail. Um, Cause that's what we're teaching. Yeah. We're just kind of a basic holster for teaching and standard training. The, now, the cool thing about these bad boys with the uh, uh, Safari Land is, yeah, 
you got a, a lighted pistol that you need mm -hmm. to put on there. You can just, the QLS system, which was really good for that. Yeah. yeah. You could just swap it out. You weren't having to build a whole new uh, rig or, you know, unscrew all this stuff and, you know, reroute it and all that. Yeah, it's really made good. the battle belt system that much more modular. And if you are, you know, if you have a ton of different pistols and you like to switch back and forth like I do, it's it's a game changer. It's mm. so awesome. And you also have these, uh, they tacos. call them the taco pouches, yeah. and these will, uh, you can pretty much put any pistol magazine within reason. Uh, you're not getting Desert Eagle mags in there. <laughs> but uh, Glock, you know, all the big main manufacturers, I think anything up to a 10 mil. Yeah, the big ones for us is, you know, nine mil and uh, you know, between. 45. Not, not all your Glock mags will fit in what your Sig mags will fit into, but they will fit in these. So you got a you know, variety of, uh, of magazines. Mm -hmm. It's probably a good way to go. Yeah, um, any other notable change? Obviously the inner belt is now tan, you know, because for all the reasons, tan is better than black mm -hmm. in most cases. So they went with that as well as, uh, you know, a different camo pattern. That one, the, other, the older one was just tan, this one's multicam. But all in all, these are great belts. Um, the, the, biggest in, or the biggest improvement, I think, is the inner um, Velcro belt, because when you're running around with a lot of weight on your belt, it's gonna slosh around. Everybody's probably experienced mm -hmm. that to some extent or another. Yeah, and bringing the, uh, the, the pistol higher up on your, uh, on your belt, so you no longer, it's not down there on your thigh, so it's always going to be in the same place, and it doesn't, you know, rock around as much yeah. as it used to. But the lower you go, man, you start running, that thing wanders all over the place. But this, it's pretty much stays right where it is. Yeah, and it's up high, you know, the uh, that Han Solo cowboy <laughs> look that was. Actually, it's cool. Yeah, it was actually used by end users in like the 90s. Yes. But then yes, as you got into the 2000s, everyone figured out that having something, the closer the gun is to your knee, the more it's gonna slosh around. And like Coach said before, your secondary, your pistol, like it needs to be in the exact same spot every single time you put this on. Every single time you're wearing it. You cannot afford to have any delay or any hiccups when you are actually trying to access the holster and get that pistol out and into the fight. So when you're setting up your battle belt, you know, you can set it up any way you want. There's, everybody has their own opinions. I mean, he and I, I mean, our stuff is gonna be a little bit different. And then also the mission is gonna dictate how you set your stuff up to a certain extent. But one big takeaway from this video is make sure that your holster is in good working condition and you are always keeping it, placing it, maintaining it in the exact same spot. Mm -hmm. And for both of us and for most of you, that's gonna be directly at three o'clock right down the seam of the pants or nine o'clock if you're a freak, but you know, <laughs> to teach their own. <laughs> All righty. Yeah, you need all kind of left-handed comments now. Yeah. We oh. love you left-handers, don't worry. No, don't worry. no, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> um, anyway, honorable mention real quick before we go uh, any further is some of the time we would just run with a sturdy leather belt and we would run whatever equipment we needed on our waist right there on the actual belt through the pants. Um, concealable holsters. Yeah, concealable um, hol holster, uh, maybe a mag pouch. If you pouch look like light. this and you're overseas, you know, trying to yeah. hide who you are, not really going to work all you that well. Blend. So, you know, I was definitely going with mid to full size handguns outside the waistband, same mag pouches. I think a lot of stuff we got issued for that low visibility type mission was made from Galco. I know I got a ton of Galco. Yeah, it wasn't so much you wanted to look like a local, you just didn't want to look military. Yeah. That was the biggest thing for, you know, if you're in, you know, Middle Eastern countries, I don't uh, know, with that beard, you grew uh, What do you mean? I don't understand. <laughs> you kidding me? Yeah. Are you kidding me that I know? It actually works really good, man. Yeah, yeah. you think you got it wrong. Of course. I have three wives, of course all right? <laughs> and when the doors are shut, It looks oh, like it's glued on, though. It looks it fake, so, I mean, they're gonna look at you like, it does. dude, really? No, yeah, yeah. No, oh, that no, really hurts. It's on there. He really did. God. I've never had someone pull my beard before. Hey. That sucked. <laughs> Need to anyway, show him. You know, um, we get so many comments about his freaking beard. Yeah. 
Yeah, we really do. And in case you are wondering what I'm staring at, I'm trying to uh, figure out what I'm going to say next <laughs> because we do not rehearse or script our videos. You're getting this raw, guys. Yeah, I'm just kind of like, oh shit, he's almost he's almost done talking. <laughs> what am I going to say? I don't know. Anyway, we got to get back on target. Yeah. Um, so aside from that low visibility mission, some guys just ran the belt on the pants with the with their accoutrements and their whatever else. Which means in that, yeah, full kit in you're going to have regalia. less stuff on this. Yeah, as gear migrated towards the plate carrier uh -huh. and towards all this, yeah, you know, you wanted to lighten up on the belt. But yeah, some people took that to kind of extreme. Yeah, I, I was never, I did do it, I guess, a little bit. But I don't know, I liked my battle belts for the full regalia, you know, going all out. Um, all right, so we have covered kind of, kind of covered the past which brings us to the present. And presently, I'm running the Blue Force Gear grid belt. They also have the chalk belt, which is a superior um, design due to the fact that it has that anchor point. Mm -hmm. That riggers belt substitution anchor point. That belt is just a little bit more robust. Um, if you're not gonna be worried about having to tether yourself, land yourself into things, you're not too worried about falling off of things, you're not actually going out into that real world operational environment where gravity defiance is, it's a thing. It's a thing. You're gonna have to defy gravity from time to time when you're actually doing this kind of stuff at that level. But if you're not, and you're just, you know, hanging out on the flat range, you know, maybe getting some LARP in. I mean, I have LARPed plenty in this thing thus far, and it has not failed me. Um, it is a lighter weight construction. Definitely can feel the difference when you pick it up. It does have that two belt. It's based on the, the two belt model, mm -hmm. though this belt is much better. The other, the older belts on the Ronins, they're just strips of Velcro, very rigid. Okay. This one is very pliable, very lightweight, and it actually contours to your, your body. Um, yeah. It has, I'm not 100% sure what the hell these are. Do you know what those are? No idea. Okay. I do know that this thing, because the Velcro has this little edging on here, uh, those other ones, uh, if you don't match this up perfectly, eventually that Velcro starts wearing on your fat roll. Okay, it'll, it'll wear on your belt. But this one here has a little bit of a, uh, it, that, that, that little cover right there, that makes it a whole lot more comfortable. Yeah. yeah for me, you know. It does. Um, and yeah, if you guys, have, those of you that have used this stuff, you know, at certain point, yeah, you did get that Velcro right on the skin. Yeah. And it was probably during a time where you were super busy and running really hard yeah. and did not have time to fix it. You know, you might have done one of these. Yeah. But yeah, you definitely, when you're putting this stuff on for all of you that may be new to this, you definitely want to land that these yeah. belts together perfectly and then that will keep that from happening this one gives you a little bit of leeway those other ones whew, not yeah it, it is you can see that the velcro actually stops at the edges here it's the material is stitched over the top of it so they had that in mind additions to this belt you know we had the uh, aftermarket cobra buckles added on it comes with a uh, stock it comes with a smaller um, little plastic buckle it probably works fine but I, I, I recommend the quick disconnect. And even the Cobra yeah. buckles are getting smaller and you know lighter. They are. They're significantly smaller sense. than what was on the ro the. Uh, you Ronin's. don't need you know a thousand pounds worth of uh, you know rigid yeah. you know. Retention. Less is more, guys. Less yeah. is more. Ten speed pistol mag pouch, just a double, because you know that's all I need for actually moving around. Got the Blue Force dump pouch. I have a IFAC, or what we call blowout kits back in the day. Uh, this one's made by London Bridge. And then really nothing else on here except for my uh, 320 holster. Mm -hmm. And again, it has that quick disconnect. So I can run with this thing. And Blue Force Gear actually makes this uh, attachment piece. You just take the, the Safari Land hardware and mount it right on there, which I thought was pretty cool that they went ahead and did that on their own. And um, Basically with this setup, I mean with the 10-speed modular, the 10-speed pouch, I can. there's a ton of platforms you can run on this thing. Mm -hmm. um, I've only been running this for a couple of months and I, and I haven't done anything cool with it. I'm just, you know, making content, teaching classes, but it has held up very well. And I, I don't know, I highly recommend it. This is what, I'm, this is what we're using. Freaking uh, Coach, 
Yeah, I'm having to Here's a belt yet. for you. Hey, cool. And uh, inside it is the uh, the Cobra buckle and the, uh, so you get your holster adapter, holster drop mount. This thing is uh, not the easiest thing to put on, so make sure you have two screwdrivers and uh, some time, some patience, and some understanding. Because anyway, uh, it comes with directions. Look yeah, at that. it comes with directions. directions all in there. And then yeah, the Cobra buckle is an add-on. But um, yeah, give it a shot. All right, we'll see. Build one more belt. Awesome. Twenty guys. This is just a quick down and dirty on um, the battle belts that I used, and you can kind of see the progression. You know as I started my career in the early 2000s to the present. Um, things have definitely evolved quite a bit, but they've also kind of stayed the same. Yeah, you use what works, you know. And as yeah. techniques change, uh, you know, you, and times, missions, you know, you can build, these days you can build mission-specific stuff without, you know, bothering your, uh, uh, your parachute rigger or learning to sew, you know. Yeah. This kind of stuff, it's, you know, it's user serviceable, you can change it, you can, you know, customize it right to you, whatever you need. Yeah, and again, you know, a lot of this stuff comes down to A, personal preference, and B, you know, what's required, what's the mission. Uh, starting out, you know, I really didn't know any better, so I had a ton of stuff on my belt. I had those machine gun pouches that I would just fill with whatever I thought I needed there in the heat of the, in the moment, stepping off for an op. Uh, but as I got older, I started to realize, you know, less is more, try to do more with less, and if I needed other stuff, just have it nearby. Have it in the vehicle, have it in a backpack, et cetera. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, so, you know, if you like this content, go ahead and give us that thumbs up. Hit the notification bell, because we're putting out a video pretty much every day. And this is Dor. And Coach. And we'll see you next time. Out.